Okay, good morning, good afternoon, or good day whenever you are watching this, students. Uh, today is day one of our three-day process of pre-writing for our argumentative paper. We're going to start with research and key terms, okay? Today's lesson is just going through your key terms, okay? So we are going to start here. Day one terms. Below are a list of your key terms for the unit. Your job is to fill in the blanks and parts of speech with the correct terms from this YouTube video. So you're on the right track. As I go through these, please listen to what I have to say and fill in all of the red words that I have written down. Okay? So, first one, argument. Very basic, right? An argument is when the author tries to convince the audience of a belief that can be defended with evidence. So it is rooted in opinion and belief. An argument is when the author truly believes something. They say, this is the thing that I'm arguing for. And they're convincing you, the audience, of their belief with evidence. Okay? So uh, our an example of an argument might be, um, you should buy an electric car instead of a gas car next time you're buying a vehicle because it's better for the environment. That's an argument, right? They believe that, they have evidence to back it up, and they're going to try to convince you to make that change. Next, evidence. What is evidence? Well, evidence is proof, such as facts or details that supports the author's purpose. So if we're going to go back to that example of the electric car versus the gas car, they may say electric cars are better for the environment because they don't put dangerous chemicals into the air that you know, add to the greenhouse effect. So that's their facts and details. Audience. The audience is the intended reader of the argument. Now, we've talked about audiences before. An audience is anybody who may read this. So when we talked about our uh, Barbie advertisement, right, the kids said, oh, a Barbie advertisement is obviously for like, you know, five, six, seven, eight year old girls, right? No, it's not just for them. It's for the parents, right? Because they're the ones with the money. So the intended audience for an argument may not be as clear cut as you think. It's all the readers who are supposed to read it. Next, an opinion. We're actually going to look at several of these together. Opinion, fact, objective, and subjective. These four ideas are very closely tied together, and we're going to be using them in tandem for the full duration of the unit. An opinion, it's a noun, is a personal belief about a topic. If I say, um, I like cheese pizza, that's a personal belief. All right, Or, cheese pizza is good. Cheese pizza is delicious. Those are all personal beliefs. A fact, however, is a provable statement. If I just say cheese pizza is good or cheese pizza is delicious, you can't actually prove that, right? Um, some people may be lactose intolerant. They're never going to think a cheese pizza is good because it's going to make them sick, right? A fact would be this cheese pizza is made with a flour crust. This cheese pizza has a thin layer of sauce. You could measure it. You could say, compared to other pizzas, does this have more or less sauce? If it has less, yeah, it's got a thin layer of sauce. Now, objective. Objective is closely tied to facts. Like I said, something that can be measured is objective. So we would want to use specific measurements. We could say, the pizza has a sauce of no more than one millimeter thick. That's a very thin sauce, right? Or we could say that the pizza has a sauce of one centimeter thick. That's crazy. That's like inedible. That's so much sauce, right? Now, subjective is very much like an opinion, right? It's an adjective. So we could say you have a subjective opinion. It's something that is felt. It's something that only you can perceive. So again, if I think pizza tastes good, that's subjective. That lives between me and my tongue. That's it, right? We're the only people who determine whether or not we like pizza. 
So those are our four terms that are going to be used very closely together. Next up, we have claim and counterclaim. So a claim is any statement that helps develop your argument. Okay, it could be a noun or a verb. So we could say, I claim this, or we can say, I made a claim. Um, but it develops your argument. So let's go back to the electric car example. A claim that I make that helps develop my argument could be something like, electric cars are better for the environment because they use fewer non-renewable resources. That's my claim, all right? Now I have to find evidence to back that up and show you the facts and statistics and data, right? But what if my audience doesn't agree with me? What if somebody wants to argue against me? They make a counterclaim. So they would say that electric vehicles use more non-renewable resources than gas cars because the batteries use tons of rare materials and rare earth metals, uses lead and silver and gold and tungsten and all these alloys and difficult things. And in the process of making this electric car, it's actually worse for the environment, right? Now, I don't know if any of those things that I just said are true, but it's a possible counterclaim, right? When you are writing your argument, you need to be writing counterclaims in against people who would attack you. So you need to be aware of all of the arguments that are going to come at you and make sure that you counter them before you get hit with them. Next, we have a thesis. This is the main idea of your entire essay. It has several parts and should be very well constructed. We'll learn more about that later, but just know that a thesis is the main idea of your essay. It's one sentence that pulls together all your ideas. Finally, last term is a call to action, a request that the reader take direct action as a result of reading your argument. So if I'm arguing that a piece of pizza is particularly delicious or well-made, there may not be a call to action there. I'm just arguing that this pizza is better than other people's pizza. Okay, fine. I may argue that one movie is uh, more artistically relevant than another movie, but in the end, you don't have to go out and do anything about it. However, if we go back to the example that I gave at the beginning with the electric car, right, if I uh, make a claim uh, if in my argument that an electric car is better the for the environment, right, then I would want you, the reader, to go buy an electric car. I don't want you to keep buying the gas cars, right? So a uh, call to action is saying, really, go do this. Now that you've learned it, now that you've heard my argument, I want you to go do this thing, all right? Um, now, we do have one more thing to do today, all right? You've written down some key terms, and now you have one more thing to do. Directions. Answer the following question by highlighting a choice and writing a short response. Which of the following organizational styles from Ms. Grindle's class do you think sounds the most effective for an argumentative essay and why? There are no right or wrong answers here. I just want you to defend your choice. So the six methods of organization that she taught you were chronological order. That's when you put things in a time order. Cause and effect, so thing A made thing B happen. Order of importance, so we're either going from most important to least important or least important to most important. A sequence, so not necessarily chronological order, but a certain series of events that occurred, right? It doesn't have to be necessarily time order, but it could be like directions, things you do have to do in a particular order, but not in any particular time. Um, compare and contrast. So, you know, you're comparing the similarities between something and then contrasting the differences between them. And finally, problem or the solution. Here's the problem. How do we fix it? Okay. Give me one of these six by highlighting it, right? You can highlight it just like this. Boom, right? Uh, and then answer right in here with the why. Okay, that's all I've got for you today. So good luck. 
and I will see you tomorrow for the next day's video for section two.